Rural. Rural contacts are the most secure for both parties and is why the principal can use it throughout the permissive spectrum. It should be the only choice for the most non-permissive environments because it may be difficult to set up a car pickup or obtain some semi-secure urban site without drawing unwanted attention. The primary reason for this security is the lack of human presence. Being there is no one to see the contact or the actions leading up to the contact, then there is little threat to the relationship or operation. The primary circumstances for meeting in the rural are poverty-stricken regions and outdoorsy residents, either by occupation, residence, or hobby. Keep in mind that violent extremist groups or oppressive regimes often plague poverty-stricken areas, so status covers must be enough to keep the principal safe when in public. The locations and behaviors need to fit well within the principal's and residents' natural patterns. The principal must not meet in rural environments unless both parties have proven a norm for being there. Most natural patterns should involve travel into or between semi-rural communities or some occupation or hobby that brings them into the rural environment on a consistent, predictable, or frequent basis. In terms of cover, both parties should have a well-established natural pattern for being in the rural separately, to the point it needs no explanation to those who know them. Friends, family, and associates should easily corroborate these covers as something for which the parties are known. This is important if the principal and resident do not make contact, then there is a natural cover for their separate presence. Furthermore, in the event they make contact, they need an action cover for why the two met in that area and at that time. This does not necessarily have to be as resilient as the natural pattern for being out there separately, but it should satisfy more questions than it raises. Often this will be either a mutual interest in something or a chance encounter. If the resident frequents a route, then the principal should expect others to frequent it too. The predictability of traffic characterizes a route's frequency, not necessarily the volume of traffic. It only takes one person to ruin an operation. If there are not enough regular, predictable gaps between the travelers on a route, then it is not suitable for making contact. If the principal cannot perform surveillance detection, then he assumes any others in the vicinity are surveillance. The resident must not leave the trail or road in the presence of another out of concern the other person may be surveillance or may notify the adversary. The first step in casing is knowing the adversary or other parties who would affect the operation. The principal avoids areas of known adversarial presence or conflicts. The principal avoids inadvertently stumbling upon an observation post and situations where others may mistake him for an enemy during an adversary's patrol. The principal knows which sections of the operational area are of importance to the adversary or any belligerence to a conflict and avoids meeting in those areas. The principal chooses places that offer no advantage to either side of a conflict. After finding the proper areas for meetings, the principal obtains maps and imagery like topographical and trail maps. These maps help find potential terrain pockets between or away from known trails. Just because a trail is not on a map does not mean it does not exist. The principal still cases the site to ensure hidden trails or popular areas are not too close. The principal uses imagery to show the vegetation and man-made structures. Some topographical maps offer this information, but not all, or it may not be in enough detail to decide suitably. Imagery is neither a human assessment nor generalization like maps are, but a two-dimensional copy of the three-dimensional landscape. Vegetation often changes with season, which may significantly alter the suitability of the site. Obtaining imagery of the area is not a prerequisite, but helps in selecting sites more efficiently. Lastly, the resident is the final factor in deciding whether a location is suitable. Just because the resident is an avid hiker does not mean he can go hiking anywhere unless he goes hiking everywhere. The resident's natural patterns limit the principal's choices. The principal finds where the resident frequents, creates a proper natural pattern for himself, and then cases the available area for any potential sites. The principal must not take the resident out of his established patterns without first expanding them which include both the residence routes and duration of travel. While the principal may case at various times to reconnoiter the terrain, vegetation, or man-made structures, any observations of human behavior are only applicable during the seasons, days, and times he plans the contact. 
Like that of urban environments, patterns of people in the rural can differ at various times of day and throughout different seasons. The principle avoids observation in an area dominated by less savory people. There are five types of locations, four required and one optional, around which the rural context will revolve. Residence natural stops, observation posts, contact points, hasty caches, optional, and meeting sites. Residence natural stops. When people travel for any significant distance or time on foot, they will stop to rest along their route. These natural stops play a key role in deciding whether the resident is under surveillance. While the principal may abort the mission if anyone else is near the resident at the contact point, it is important to know whether the, the resident is under surveillance in general. The behavior of others in response to the resident's actions, in this case stopping for rest, is indicative of the third party's purpose for being there. If the resident is under surveillance, the principal reevaluates the operation. Observation Posts the purpose of observation posts is to assess for any potential threats at the resident's natural stops. The principal watches others who are traveling with the resident, if any, and assesses reaction to the resident at his natural stops. The principal instructs the resident to communicate whether he feels safe with some specific behavior or displaying some object that is identifiable from the observation post. This is a proper time to discuss the options presented to surveillance upon the resident's stops. The surveillance element may set up some hasty observation post, which can be after passing the resident or after stopping short out of sight. If there are multiple surveillance operatives, they may rotate. Where command continues, back up, stop with the resident, or set up a hasty observation post before the stop, and any others stay out of sight further back. Regardless of the actions, the principal selects observation posts, which afford a good vantage point to see these behaviors. If it appears that the resident has company at each stop, then the parties do not meet. While it is less likely, surveillance can stalk the resident by paralleling through the adjacent brush. Depending on the environment, this may hinder surveillance movement and risk attracting the resident's attention via noise, movement, or animal's reaction. If applicable, the observation post should have a good vantage point of the area to see any potential stalking operatives. Two observation posts are the required minimum to detect surveillance, a post watching over the last intersection or natural stop before the contact point, and another post watching over the contact point with an unobstructed view of both directions. If using the minimum, then the principal aborts the contact if he sees another person traveling with or near the resident. Being the occupation of the first observation post has a time limit, the principal watches the last intersection or stop for either the sum of time it takes to contact the resident and travel from the contact point to the meeting site, or enough time it takes for the resident to be out of sight of the last intersection or stop, whichever duration is longer. This ensures a suitable time window to counter any surveillance missed after leaving the first observation post. The first observation post should have enough overwatch to view both the last intersection or stop and the point at which the resident would no longer be visible from that intersection or stop. The contact points observation posts should see far enough in each direction that by the time any passerby cross the contact point, the principal and the resident are out of sight and sound. Even though the principal theoretically cleared the direction from which the resident is traveling, he must not neglect it, as this is his last line of defense in the event something extraordinary happens. These observation posts do not have to be off the trails and in the bush. If the principal can logically and discreetly see these important points of the resident's route from the same or adjacent trail, then he may do so. However, an observation post on the same route will not likely offer much of a vantage point to confidently assess the seclusion of the contact. The exception is the observation post of the contact point, which will be at some point between the contact and the meeting site. The cover should be enough to have a brief encounter on the trail, but offer a polite excuse if anyone else shows up near the contact. If the principal has trusted friends or associates, having them occupy the observation post will exponentially increase the reliability and security of the meeting. This way, the principal does not have to sacrifice time at some of these locations or make too many movements in the brush, which can be dangerous, noisy, or slow. If support is available, then the principal needs some form of communication to securely pass information to and from the other counter-surveillance support. 
This will help prevent any amateur radio or adversarial SIGINT operators from intercepting. One example would be to devise a system of squelches over a radio. This system should include the stop or observation post identifier, whether the resident has company, and whether the resident is showing the safe signal. Furthermore, the resident needs a signal to distinguish him from anyone else who may be on the route. This prevents support from mistaking the resident for someone else or someone else as the resident. Contact point is the point the principal reaches out to the resident to bring him to the meeting site, which means this is also the point where the resident deviates from his natural patterns. This is where the mission crosses over from the normal life to the clandestine one, and as such involves some serious risk. Primarily, the principal ensures there is adequate concealment at this point, so no one else can see the contact or the movement to the meeting site. He also ensures there are no other vantage points at, to this location along adjacent trails where a casual passerby could inadvertently see the contact or the parties leaving the path. The principal studies the maps to find ridges and peaks and reconnoiters for spots that have a clear view of the contact point. Next, the principal makes contact. Being that no other travelers are on the path near the resident, the principal can securely approach the resident personally by interdicting him on the trail. However, the principal may devise an auditory or visual signal to draw the resident off the trail toward the principal, making the first contact a few yards from a normal path. Hasty caches can help if the meetings need compromising materials. The principal can load the cache upon arrival to the area or on the way to the contact point, and then unload on the way to the meeting after making contact. The purpose of the hasty cache is to relinquish possession of compromising evidence in the event the principal missed surveillance or a hostile confronts the principal. Even if the adversary finds the cache, there is still deniability, except when the contents of the cache can name either party. This is a good point to bring up shorthand. The principal should consider developing his own shorthand or learning another language. If someone finds his notes, then it may add a layer of security between potentially compromising evidence and the principal. After the meeting, the principal may wish to reload the cache with the compromising materials while he performs surveillance detection. If the principal did attract surveillance and they stop and search the principal, he will not have any compromising materials. The principal would then make another mission to retrieve the notes and materials as soon as he decides he is clear. This is at the principal's discretion. Meeting sites are the secluded locations where the principal and resident meet. While true, the further from the populated areas, the more secure the site, however, there is a diminishing effect. There is a point where any further from populated areas offers no added security, but continues to use valuable time and resources. The meeting site should be as close to the resident's natural patterns without sacrificing the characteristics that make it secure. These meeting sites can take many forms, whether on secluded side trails or roads, natural draws into a secluded area, or locations not accessible through any path, natural or man-made. Regardless of how these sites manifest themselves, the point is the intermediate area secludes and protects the site from sight and sound of more populated routes or areas. Distance through or over natural features gives seclusion in the rural. These features include vegetation and terrain. During casing, the principal decides what distance is enough to protect the meeting. The principal quantifies these levels of protection in the form of a radius. The principal does this by watching and listening to others in the area from either the perspective of the principal, resident, or a casual passerby. Military units have a technique known as the cloverleaf. When setting up a rendezvous or encampment, the unit will perform a cloverleaf to ensure there are no threats or concerns in the immediate area. The patrol leaves in one cardinal direction and loops back around to an adjacent cardinal direction and repeats this for all four directions. The principal ensures there is no other trail, campsite, road, point of interest, or some frequented area next to the meeting site. The principal looks for more than the obvious signs, like worn paths or man-made clearings, but smaller, more subtle signs. He looks for any types of trash, broken twigs, or branches where people would kick or step, carvings on trees, and so on. The principal avoids locations where children, adolescents, or nefarious groups may use as a secret rendezvous. The distance traveled for the cloverleaf is at least the same distance set up initially in the seclusion radius. 
The denser the vegetation or more prominent the terrain, the less distance the site needs for security. Crossing over prominent terrain features may draw attention as the parties might silhouette the skyline. The principal uses minor terrain features to separate the meeting site from the other frequented routes and areas. Area familiarization eventually leads the principal to noticing interesting natural pockets and paths that make good meeting locations. It is a matter of performing due diligence. It helps if the principal is in good physical condition. The departure point is like the contact point, but instead of going from the route to the meeting site, this is going from the meeting site back out to the route. The departure point should be different from the contact point. It should be further along the residence route, inviting a logical flow. Aside from this, the departure point shares many of the same characteristics as the contact point. The principal should have an observation post to ensure that no one else is at the departure point when the resident returns to his route, and it should have enough concealment from each direction on the route and from any other potential vantage points. The routes to case include infiltration, observation, meeting, emergency, abort, and exfiltration. This would be a proper time to pick up a book on military land navigation and operations in rural terrain. This other reading includes the principles of navigation through unimproved or desolate areas, movement techniques, and route planning considerations. While the principal may not have to travel great distances from beaten paths, he could easily lose his bearings if he does not know what to do. It is best to start getting comfortable with land navigation and movement in the wild. When casing each route, the principal makes note of how long it takes to travel the various legs of the route. This includes how fast the resident walks, how fast others walk, and how fast the principal walks. Any potential threats or obstacles along the route. If obstacles exist, the principal understands how these obstacles would affect the mission. For example, in the case of searches, the principal needs to know the purpose of the search, what the searchers are looking for, and where they look. The principal decides if the potential encounter would be a threat to the operation or just an inconvenience. The demographics of the route, if applicable. If the route or area is of one demographic, then the principal needs to know the potential of the adversary scrutinizing, stopping, questioning, or searching him. The traffic and its clear times. The less traffic during the planned meeting, the more secure it will be. Only those routes that offer seclusion to leave and re-enter the trails or roads during meeting times are suitable. Anything else the principal feels would help or hinder movement as it pertains to the purpose of executing the route. The requirements may differ between the distinct types of routes. Infiltration. Even if the area is permissive, the resident may still be under surveillance upon his arrival to the contact. The principal avoids signaling his presence or identity. This usually means that the principal approaches the area or route from an oblique direction. If the principal drives to the general area, he parks outside the vicinity of where the residence parks. The principal may cut through the bush from an adjacent trail or road to avoid observation on the same route as the resident. The infiltration route involves starting point, where the principal begins his movement to the area. This is often a staging area after conducting surveillance detection. Directions to the debarkation point. From a prominent landmark to the last point before leaving a normal road or path. The debarkation point is where the principal switches from normal to questionable behavior like trekking off into the bush. This may be a transition point from vehicular to foot travel. Waypoints to the destination. This is the route from the debarkation point to the destination, which is the first observable post or hasty cache. These can be the most crucial part of the infiltration as it is the part where most people would lose their way. This is where the principal implements the skills he obtained from studying and practicing land navigation. Observation route connects the observation posts. The principal's plans accommodate the time it takes to move between posts. The principal must arrive at the next observation post before the resident gets to his corresponding stop. Each leg between observation posts needs a series of waypoints to navigate from one to the other. The last leg of this route is from the contact point's observation post to the contact point, which should not be that far and an easy route to execute. Meeting route. This is the route the resident takes if everything goes to plan. This includes where he arrives to the area, the pass to his cover stops, the contact point, the meeting site, the return to the cover route, 
and his exit from the area. The only part of this route that includes the principal is making contact, traveling to the meeting, and leaving from the contact. This route is about the resident. Emergency route. This route is optional and when the principal executes to flee the meeting. Whether the resident goes with the principal during escape is optional. The principal decides this on a case-by-case basis. The purpose is an emergency exfiltration from the area before the adversary has a chance to engage the principal. The principal needs to decide if either or both parties escape. Some circumstances make confronting the adversary or authorities with a cover more secure than trying to run. Abort route. This route is also only for the resident and is the normal route the resident takes if the parties do not meet. This means his natural pattern. An exception is if the principal uses a signal to draw the resident from the natural path. The abort route would include this new segment to and from. Exfiltration route. This is the principal's final route out of the area. After making contact, this is like the infiltration route except backwards. From the breaking contact with the resident to where the principal begins surveillance, detection again, and all the waypoints in between. From there, the principal either caches any corresponding items or returns to his cover life. A major concern is being able to find the locations again. It can be very easy to lose his way if the principal must travel a few hundred meters between points. Maps brought to meetings should not have observation posts, cover stops, contact point, meeting site, infiltration, exfiltration, or emergency routes or checkpoints. The principal memorizes these important points along with using expedient land navigation methods and prominent features to help guide him throughout the area. Pinpointing these operational locations is like land navigation except at a micro level. While land navigation uses a series of major and minor terrain features identifiable on a map, the principal uses the micro features only identifiable through direct observation. He uses nature and its mutations to help guide him to these points. These should be objects and features that are so uncommon that they are obvious. A couple of examples are mutated trees, massive or oddly shaped boulders, rocks, or formations thereof, caves, streams, clearings, grouped vegetation, and so on. The amount of daisy chaining depends on how easy it is to navigate through the brush. Sometimes the principal needs three legs to get from one point to another, other times ten. This will completely depend upon the principal, the environment, and how prominent these locations are. Lastly, once the principal finds a site, he details the terrain and vegetation in each cardinal direction. This allows him to verify the exact spot later when he prepares for the actual meeting. The principal names three prominent features or objects that stand out in different directions from the operational location. This will confirm the location during validation. It is common for people to be off by several meters and end up at a point vulnerable to casual passerby. The key points to take away from this chapter are understanding when using a rural location is proper, least permissive environments, concealment and seclusion are of higher importance than strong covers and normal behavior, and these environments are some of the most secure as long as the resident's natural patterns are conducive.